Hey gang, I've recently made a very significant upgrade to my gaming rig, and that's to the displays that I use. Formerly, I was using three 27-inch 1440p displays, with the center one that I play all my games on being the Asus PG278Q. That's the original 1440p 144Hz panel with G-Sync that debuted over four years ago. I actually purchased that monitor when it first launched, and I've been happily using it ever since. Recently, after two years of teasing us, Asus finally released the PG27UQ. That's right, two years. We saw a hint of this thing during some press release in the summer of 2016, but most don't actually remember that. This panel is, again, a 27-inch display, but it does 4K at 144Hz and features NVIDIA's G-Sync. Now, I'm not going to show you a video of the actual panel sitting on my desk because that would require me filming my desk, and my desk is in a bit of a mess right now. If you want to see the panel it itself, just look at the other people's videos. There are plenty online right now. Getting this panel was a bit of a challenge. I game with YouTuber Levelcap every so often, and I saw his video about this panel when he published it last week. During one of our Battlefield 1 gameplays, I asked him how he managed to get his hands on it so quickly and he told me that Newegg had a waiting list. I didn't even know that. I quickly logged into Newegg's site, reserved my own, and then started reading some of the comments. One of the guys on there said that he canceled his Newegg pre-order because his local Micro Center had one. Silly me, I didn't even realize that I should have checked my Micro Center first. Well, I logged into their what local website, and I saw they had six of them in stock. I reserved one, and the next morning I had it. Pure luck and timing, that's all that was. Now while I was at it, I figured it was time to completely 4K out my system. So I picked up two much less expensive LG 27 inch IPS 4K displays to replace my other 1440p panels. You can see the three boxes here in the photo that I snapped. My primary goal with this video is to show the results of gaming on a 4K panel at high refresh rates. I'm not going to watch movies on it. I don't care about the HDR capabilities of it. I'm purely after the 4K resolution and the high refresh rates, which this panel delivers in spades. In the background here, you can see some bad Battlefield 1 gameplay. What else would you expect from me? Say what you will about DICE, their Battlefield titles have one of the best and most optimized engines in the gaming industry, for the most part. I'll explain what I mean by, about that in a bit later. I don't normally play with the OEM FPS counter in the upper right corner, as I have my own system overlay that I run. That shows me the CPU load and temperatures, the GPU load and temperatures, and the frame rate. But recording that overlay with OBS Studio dropped my in-game frame rate by over 30 or 40 FPS. So I disabled that in OBS Studio and enabled the Battlefield display instead. That way you can see my frame rate. I have all of my Battlefield games soft limited to 140 frames per second. I do that to keep my display in its G-Sync sweet spot. For the most part, that's what you're seeing here, 140 FPS. In BF1, my graphics settings are all ultra except anti-aliasing, post-processing, and ambient occlusion. Those three I disable, or turn to their absolute lowest setting. They don't add much, but they do take away a lot. However, even with most everything else set to Ultra, even in 4K, my system is able to keep its 140 frames. Not bad. Battlefield 4 is exactly the same way. I have the game configured identically to Battlefield 1. Everything's Ultra except AA and AO. And sure enough, it pretty much stays right at its soft limit of 140 frames per second. Battlefield 1 is fairly pretty in 4K. Battlefield 4 is just stunning in 4K. It's really hard to compare the two. Sure, BF1 is a lot newer, but the artwork in BF4 just seems a lot more appealing to me. Either way, they both play super smoothly, even on 4K. And that's where my good luck somewhat comes to an end. Two more games to talk about here. The first is Rainbow Six Siege. I play a lot of Siege. I'm terrible at it, of course, but I play it nonetheless. Siege is using an ancient Assassin's Creed engine, I think, and it's not optimized to run 
to run at 4K whatsoever. It looks stunning in 4K, no question, but it plays very roughly because it kicks the crap out of my two GPUs. By the way, my system specs are in a link in the description below, but for the record, I'm using two overclocked, liquid-cooled Titan X Pascal GPUs. They can usually make short work of most games, but not Siege, at least not in 4K. You can see the Siege OEM FPS counter in the lower left of the screen. I also have Siege soft limited to 140 frames per second, but at 4K, it rarely comes close to that. I'm lucky to hold anything over 100, frame, 100 frames per second for any length of time, even with the details set down to medium. It doesn't make much of a difference. It's too bad about Siege because I really enjoy playing it so much. When I was running it in 1440p, it seemed to do pretty well as far as frame rate is concerned. I'd routinely nudge into the 140 frame per second limit, but not running in 4K. And I don't expect anything to ever change with that given, again, how old the engine is. And that brings us to our final game. Good luck struck me recently and I was invited to participate in the Battlefield 5 closed alpha. Plenty of other folks will do their reviews of the game, so I'll spare you mine. I will say that it looks epic, especially in 4K. It's beyond stunning, but holy shit is it unoptimized. As you can see from the frame counter, I can barely even hit 100 frames per second. Much less go over it. One problem is that because it's so new, there isn't a properly written SLI profile for it yet. That means when it runs, it only beats on one of my GPU, you, GPUs versus two of them. To remedy that, I edited the Battlefield 1 SLI profile and attached Battlefield 5 to it. It's not an ideal solution because there are all sorts of other minor video hiccups that come with that. But now it does use both of my Titans and it kicks the ever-loving shit out of them. Changing the detail levels doesn't seem to make a huge difference to the frame rate. It just generally stays a bit under 100 frames per second. I'd certainly get a better frame rate by dropping down to 1440p, but that's not the point of owning this wonderful display. And to be fair, this Battlefield 5 Alpha isn't going to last too long anyway. I'm sure DICE will do their usual level of engine polish before the game is released, so I'm not terribly upset about the frame rate. Any downsides? Yes, the fan. The panel does have a little cooling fan integrated in the back of it because it runs so damn hot. That fan is annoying to me. I can hear it clear as day. Others say they don't notice it at all, but I'm a bit more sensitive to higher pitched frequencies, and this fan sounds like it's teeny and it's spinning at a bazillion RPMs. But was this monitor worth the exceptional $2,000 price tag? I actually think so. Yeah, it's a lot of money for a 27-inch display, and it's aimed at the hyper-enthusiasts right now that have the GPUs that can push 4K at higher refresh rates. I don't expect the display to come down in price anytime soon. I don't even expect it to come down in price in the next couple of years. I do expect newer video cards to come out that can much more easily push 4K at higher frame rates. So while the cost of entry with the panel itself won't change, it will become a lot less expensive to build a system that can push it. Now, if you have any questions about the panel that I might be able to answer, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you later.